Alright guys, Tentacle Rap here back again today. Hope you are all enjoying your day so far and we have an interesting topic to run through today. Yesterday it was kind of linked to these preset classes supposedly are coming to Call of Duty Black Ops Card War in advance of the CDL 2021 season. And what exactly does this mean? GAs have been a big discussion these last several weeks, that being gentlemen's agreements. It seems like these preset classes will now be included or at least the GAs will be implemented within these preset classes. Does that mean that enter GAs? What does this mean for the challenger side? What does this mean? for say like game battles or even something like league play will we have to play on what the pros are using in that league play setting as well when the CDL mode is activated. Intrigued to hear your perspective on this in the comment section below. Is this a move in the right direction? Is this a move away from it? Is this a move in favour of well kind of promoting the pros GAs which maybe go somewhat too far? I think you can certainly argue either way. Like if you guys enjoyed the video subscribe if you are new as always I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. Firstly this is from Octane given we're talking about classes. Krig is retired. M4 go crazy. Crazy seems like Octanes are on the M4 wave, the XM4 wave for now. Kind of interesting given the fact that I thought that Octane, given the ICR2, was kind of his go-to weapon back in Black Ops 4, would probably still favour the Krig, even on uh, some maps where most ARs are using the M4. So maybe we'll get somewhat less of a personal preference meta than we expected. But with these preset classes, there's going to be 15 preset classes, to my understanding. There's going to be several classes per weapon, so players can still have some personal preference in terms of the attachments they're using, maybe the reflex sight they've got on it, what they decide to use on that. Maybe, uh, you know, some of the equipment they might put on, whether it's a stun, whether it's a flashbang, something to that effect. So we'll go into exactly what this means in just a second here. To quickly mention this, the French Phenom Hydra has been playing on 60 Hertz. He is about to get unlocked. So if you guys haven't done this, if you guys have a 144 Hertz monitor and you, you didn't really notice any difference or you think uh, the difference you might be noticing might be placebo, on Windows 10, head to Settings, System, Display, Advanced Display Settings, Display Adapter Properties, click on the Monitor tab and make sure the screen refresh rate is in the right place because a number of pros figuring out these last couple of days that they actually hadn't have done this and uh, well if you guys are on 144 hertz monitor and didn't really feel a difference then make sure you have changed this to actually show you're enabling that 144 hertz mode on that monitor you may happen to have and well as Clay says here even pros do it too as Octane says I, I bought a 240 hertz monitor like two weeks ago never even changed the settings I'm seeing a whole new world right now so this is what happened yesterday Luti over at the European region kind of the gatekeeper of the European challenger scene says European GA update Gung Ho will now be G8 moving forwards. So some of the GAs this season have been instigated by the amateurs. The AK-47 first was GA'd by the amateur players, then the pros kind of followed along. But the Gung Ho GA kind of first came out of the North American challenges, maybe in the North American pro scene, and is only now catching up in the European region. And Luti explains this GA in a video, not necessarily saying that, okay, the European amateurs agree with the pros, but rather that oh, the European amateurs are going to have to play on the classes that the pros play on, and therefore we just have to copy their gentlemen's agreement because, well, all the classes that are going to be available in the game relatively soon, these custom classes, are, well, not going to have gung-ho in them because that's not what the pros use and the GAs that the pros have been deciding these last several months are going to be implemented into these preset classes. So the tweet you did has since been deleted, but I was quick enough to grab it and download it. So I'll show a little bit of it on screen right here of him kind of describing how these custom classes might work. Um, I'm here to do a little explanation video on why we've done the gung-ho GA today. Because um, there were a few arguments as well in the European DM chat because it wasn't put up for a vote, it was just done automatically. Uh, now the reason for that being is, um, at some point in February, we will be using custom set classes for anything CDL related. So the, uh, the Krig class that you're using now, the subclass, the sniper class, probably isn't going to be the one that you'll be using in scrims or anything CDL related. Any tournaments, you probably won't be using it. Um, apparently at some point in Feb we'll be using uh, classes that are already set up for us so there may be a Krig class though with 8 attachments, another one with 5 attachments and you've just got to pick a Krig class so it's no sort of about these attachments, you use what's there um, apparently what the pros are already using um, so certain perks won't be on them I don't know if you know but the pros of GA Gung Ho um, and that's why we followed it in this occasion because when it comes to this uh, these preset classes that we have to use gun core won't be on them so it makes sense for us to do that now so i heard about the potential of this a couple of weeks ago now and i don't think it's going to be the case for the launch weekend this kickoff classic coming up in just a few days time but it will be the case for the opening weekend i believe of the league from february the 11th onward so every single pro is going to have the opportunity to pick from 15 custom classes i believe there's probably going to be like five krigs five ak-74s five xm-4s or something like that i think they're even going to be different 
difference between um, something like Hardpoint and Search and Destroy because in Search you're going to have a sniper rifle option and you're going to have a couple of smoke grenade options because smokes aren't fully GA'd in Search and Destroy. I think you can have like two of them but snipers are GA'd in Respawn and smokes are GA'd in Respawn so it's going to be different what people can select in different settings and um, honestly this really doesn't make much difference for the professional scene. The pro players are going to use these classes anyway. They're working with the developers to determine what these classes are going to be. That's the whole reason these classes have come about because the pros are basically like worked with Tony Flame and the guys to say okay yeah we want this to be a class we want that to be a class and um, no, the pros it's not really going to affect too much for them but on the amateur side let's say back in the day we always used to have issues about okay the GAs are so complicated okay this guy's using an attachment on his sniper rifle he shouldn't be in the pro GA therefore what are we going to do are we going to blacklist him from the community or something like that nowadays that's just not possible right you have to use what the pros are using it does add that level of consistency so I suppose now the GAs are done and out the way we may now have a consistent rule set the entire season where the preset class is remain. The question mark is, right, if pros start to then change the GAs, maybe they add something new in, then the preset classes just have to change anyway, and um, you know, who knows, we get a position where these preset classes get a GA'd, right, maybe, okay, custom class 6, too damn strong, it's got, like, it's got the stun grenade, and it's got this attachment on the AK-74U, it's too good, we're gonna GA custom class 6, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's a possibility, maybe it's not, but as I say, for the pros, I don't think it would matter too much, there's gonna be probably multiple different attachment combinations available. The real question is, to me, what what exactly does this mean, say, for something like League Play, right? Because there's been some issues these last few titles, especially really now, the fact that GAs have gone so far. There's so many GAs, they're so complicated. Even keeping up with what the pros are using in terms of what barrels are allowed and stuff is very, very complex indeed. And obviously, this will continue to happen in future years with all the attachments we now have in the game due to the whole Battle Royale thing. The creator class situation is pretty difficult to keep up with. But in something like League Play, typically we've seen, okay, like people are using all sorts of smokes. They might be using the AK-47, which is, of course, GA'd by the pros and um, well if the pros didn't GA the AK-47 it would be pretty much the dominant weapon in the game. If you're playing league play you're going to be playing a very different game to what the pros are playing because everyone's going to be using the AK-47 because it's the strongest weapon in the game you could argue. It's just going to be 74Us and AK-47s whereas um, in the pro play of course they're using XM4s, they're using Kriggs and therefore people are probably wondering if they're playing league play why aren't they playing the same game that the pros are playing. So does that mean that they will just implement these preset classes into league play as well and keep them updated with what the pros are playing? That might even make sense in terms of how it's best to implement something like this. You simply said, okay, as soon as you select CDL Search and Destroy, that just presets all your classes to 15, and you just have to choose one of them. And then that would affect the pro play, that would affect amateur play, that would affect game battles, and it would also affect league play, right? And that's a very interesting question to me, whether this is something that we should be okay with, right? Because certainly some consistency between what, um, well, casual competitive fans, I suppose, play in terms of league play, and what the pros are playing, it makes perfect sense. But at the same time, if the pros have so much control on what gets used, what doesn't get used it might be a little bit more difficult for someone you know little Timmy hops into league play he doesn't know why he can't use his AK-47 maybe it needs some explaining in the game or something and it means that if you happen to really like a weapon like the QBZ or something and that's kind of your favorite go-to niche pick you now all of a sudden can't use it because it's not in the custom classes that the pros have uh, well allowed into the game so it's kind of interesting from both angles I can see some pros I can see some cons as Cod Gamepedia says look there's a limited number of classes the initial reaction may be negative but it does make it easier for new viewers to understand what is happening makes it easier for people probably to participate in competitive you just pick a class that the pros are using and then run with that and pick whichever one you feel fits your role the best or fits exactly how you want to play the game the best so as I say I can see some pros I can see some cons it probably does uh, limit some creativity that people are able to do on a you know, league play challenges stuff like this people might try different weapons that might work in a niche environment like let's say a new weapon comes into the game that you know, could work the pros just decide okay now nah, we're just going to GA it and not allow it effectively in the preset classes and therefore if it's not allowed in the presets nobody really is allowed to use it at all but at the same time it probably benefits the fact that's okay well in league play sometimes back in the day you'd get people pulling out uh, you know LMGs, shotguns, sniper rifles and respawns just not really helping the team at least now they're actually forced to pick a class that is actually competitive right so definitely some pros and cons some interesting sides of things as COD GamePD also say seeing some people say this change will limit creativity but uh, well the pros don't really have any creativity anyway they just choose these classes and that's just what they're going to use in the entirety of the season so maybe there is an extent to which here it's ending gentlemen's agreements for well the foreseeable future maybe GAs are just done now and these are the preset classes we're going to have the entire season but the implications for the challenger side and um, you know game battles and league play is very much the interesting one to me and I'm very intrigued to hear your thoughts on this down in the comment section because I'm not really sure where my mind is made up here. Last couple of things just to mention before we finish off the video I thought this was entertaining method says everyone take a look at, at cod league's header and uh, well he's pretty fine he this pretty funny and slack tweeted out kickoff classic January 23rd 24th we've got a 
picture of TJ Halley in the Cod Links header right here. And they're pretty funny how, okay, Krim and TJ Halley have had their disagreements, their disputes, their drama over the last couple of years. TJ looking more and more like Krim six by the day uh, with this uh, with this beard he's got going on right here. But as you can see, kickoff classic, January 23rd. In just a few days' time, it's going to happen. And while well, TJ Halley will be playing up against the Optic Chicago, the final match of that Sunday, Optic Chicago versus Los Angeles Thieves. And well, plenty of other matches. They're just showing matches that don't count for points or anything for the season. But it's going to be good to see where these teams are potentially stacking up and at least have some Call of Duty to watch at long last. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm know you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I'll grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care. And I will see you next time.